We are in El Salvador, about the size of Maryland, and the smallest of the Central American republics. It is known as the Garden Republic, certainly one of the most beautiful countries in all Latin America. Lake Ilopongo, 10 miles by 5, is the national playground. And sooner or later, so they say down here, every one of El Salvador's 2 million people come here to admire and to enjoy themselves. The great highway bridge of Cascatlan symbolizes El Salvador's progress. She has completed her share of the important inter-American highway. The road comes south from the United States via Mexico and Guatemala, and thence on to Panama via Nicaragua and Costa Rica. Along the road we pass vast fields of sisal, a plant we know as the century plant. In El Salvador's semi-tropical climate, sisal grows lush and strong, as do the weeds. From sisal, we get the tough fibers that make cord and rope. It is an important crop to all Salvador. Moving on, we visit a coffee plantation, one of the thousands of small family-owned ranches that are the pride of El Salvador. Whole families work when the crop comes in, for all coffee must be picked by hand. When the price of coffee is high, the people of El Salvador are prosperous, for theirs is one of the world's finest coffees and the most important crop in the country. Each sack of coffee weighs about 100 pounds. The men carry the sacks to the packing plant, where the work of making the coffee ready to ship is done. Sometimes these little plants are owned by one man, sometimes by groups of small growers working together. The washing of the coffee is important and always must be done in running water. The work is not easy. After the berries have been washed, they must be carefully dried so that moisture cannot harm them in the ships carrying the coffee to the United States and other countries that buy El Salvador's crops. The coffee must be turned over during the day so that the sun can dry the berries evenly. Before the coffee can be used, it must be roasted. This is done after the coffee reaches its destination. The reason? Every country prefers its own method of roasting, which affects the flavor of the coffee. A side road brings us to the little village of El Ilabosco, where 2,000 people have won lasting fame for a most unusual art. Working with the simplest of tools, women of Ilabosco make the tiniest of figurines. Little clay dolls, designed especially for the Christmas season. The paints used are mixed to secret formulas.
very, very small the figures are. An Indian home. And here's all the family. Aha! Superman, who is just as popular in El Salvador as he is at home. Cowboys. Market Day, the Tortilla Man. The Fruit Sellers. A Market Day group. Sometimes the great inter-American highway develops traffic jams. International travel is still only a small percentage of the traffic. For after all, the road here belongs to the people of Salvador and their possessions, including the cattle. But we're soon free. We stop at Tecla to visit the College of Santa Cecilia and to see the work that has won acclaim for its teachers and students. The boys who have won admittance have a good time, but also have an assured future. The boys specialize in the decorative arts, including work in metal fashioning. At the forge, they put to practical use their preliminary work in design learning to shape metal and to weld it. Throughout Latin America, there is a constant market for artistically done wrought iron, and a master of the trade never lacks for work. Other students go in for wood carving. They practice the use of hand saws in the old tradition of the carver. They learn that a mistake with a chisel can't be fixed and that attention and carefulness afford the only certain results. The designs they cut are their own work, even to the most intricate patterns. Assembled, stained, and finished. Cabinet work of this high standard has brought fame and prosperity to many graduates of Santa Cecilia's. Not every boy can qualify for this work, for the master craftsman must know all the branches of the trade, including the finest inlays. It's only a short run to San Salvador Volcano and to San Salvador itself, the capital city. Here live 165,000 people in a valley half a mile high, where earthquakes are taken as a matter of course. The National Palace was built to withstand the most severe shocks. A ride through the city reveals how modern San Salvador has become. The city is more than 400 years old, far older than any city in the United States. Yet its streets teem with buses and cars and traffic policemen exactly as in any city in our own land. The house windows are a bit different. Always they are barred in the old time Spanish way. And after mass on Sundays, when the women wear their finest mantillas, the central plaza all is crowded. By custom, this is the hour to read the papers and to take it easy. Good luck to our good neighbors, the people of El Salvador.